Happy Pride! Pride. <laughs> okay. Hello, welcome back to another gay video. <laughs> this video is part of a mini series for Pride Month called For the Gays, where I make four gay videos for every single one of you who's watching this right now. <laughs> you want some gay books? Well, <laughs> we are here to provide. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm lying. Girl Pal is here to provide mm -hmm. because Girl Pal reads a shit ton more than me. Yeah. You've read all of these books, so these are all your recommendations. Yes. I have read a few, so I'll jump in when I want to add read... my two cents. Yeah, for your two books. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but anyway, this video is actually Girl Pal, so I'm going by. <laughs> Bye. Have fun. See you later. Slam store. <clears throat> So the first book is Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden. This was actually the first lesbian book that I ever read back when also, I was 15. Also, it, it was mine too. <laughs> Why is that? Because we did a book exchange when like we really first met. Mm -hmm. I gave you a book and you gave me a book. And I gave you this book. And it was my and first gay little, book. And all the little tabs that you can see in because it, they're from you. It was cute. Mm -hmm. I bookmarked the cute things. Yes. Anyway, sorry, goodbye. Bye, I told you to leave. <laughs> Get out of my video. Sorry. <laughs> It follows Liza and Annie, who are both teenage girls at high school. They go to different high schools, but they meet each other at a museum and become friends and then a little bit more than friends. It's very sweet, very gay. It was written in the 80s and it's probably set in around that time too. And actually when it was written and first published, it was banned in a bunch of schools in America and it got burned on like a council district step in Kansas, but we persevere. And Nancy Garden is a bit of a book hero of mine. So thank you, Nancy. This one is good for for teens and young adult readers. Probably best if you're already out of the closet just cause like you can see from the cover, it's pretty gay. If you like high school romances, give it a go. Book number two is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. It follows Briseis who inherits a mansion family estate, moves there with her two mums. She's adopted and they're gay. Yeah, two she, mums! Two mums! And then she also kind of sort of gets a girlfriend through this book too, which is really cute. She has magical plant powers. She gets to discover those a bit more when she moves to this mysterious inherited house. But when she inherits the house, she also inherits some family secrets. So if you like a bit of mystery, black girl magic, people coming into their own power, this book's really good for all those sorts of things. The writer also wrote another book before this one that's called Cinderella is Dead, which is also gay. It's like a lesbian reimagining of the Cinderella story. So you need to be a bit more out of the closet to read this one, just cause it's a bit more obvious that this one's queer. This Poison Heart, safe fit in the closet. There's nothing on the cover or on the back that would indicate that it's gay. So have a go of that one if you want. But if you're safe to read this one, also recommend Cinderella is Dead. The third book on the list is Hanny and Issue's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba J. Gadar. This one is about Hanny and Issue who agree to start having a fake relationship at their high school, both for different reasons. But as the story goes on, they both catch feelings as always happens. It's really cute. They're both Bengali girls. The author is a Bengali person too. So it's really culturally sensitive. So if you like books that are own voices books, POC characters, queer girls. If you're a fan of To All The Boys I've Loved Before, would definitely recommend this one as well. Probably best to read if you're already out of the closet. This one's got a really cute artwork of Hanny and Issue on the front and it does mention the fake relationship on the back. Would recommend for young teen to older teen readers. There's nothing super graphic in here. There are some cultural things discussed, so just keep that in mind. Spoiler if you don't wanna know, but just as a content warning, one of the two girls is essentially outcast by her family towards the end of the book for being gay and open with her sexuality. She's still with the other girl, the relationships continues and they're still happy and together at the end of the book, but that family issue does persist. So just keep that in mind if that's something that you wanna be wary of. You read this one. This is my book, this one. Yes. Which is Don't Burn. Book number four. Who's it by? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel <laughs> Sterling. <laughs> this one follows Hannah, who's a teen elemental witch who lives in Salem, yes. That Salem for all the witchy fans <laughs> yeah. out there. Some stuff starts going wrong in the town, evidence of dark magic. So Hannah has to team up with her ex-girlfriend, Veronica, to suss out what's going on and figure out who's doing all the dark magic. But at the same time, there's a new girl in town who Hannah may or may not have a big crush on. <laughs> Lots of gay angst, lesbian drama, as well as actual magical drama. Yeah, you've read this one. I have. Mm -hmm. And I think this one is good for anyone who's like maybe 14, 15 plus. At some point in the book, it is implied that they do, you know, have sexy times, <laughs> but it's not graphic at all. No, it's almost like after it's happened, they talk about it having happened before. Yeah. So yeah, nothing graphic. Mm -hmm. There are 
cute little kisses in there, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And probably, as you can see from like the cover with the cute little tarot card situation, it's pretty obvious that this one's a little bit queer, so just keep that in mind if you want to purchase. But speaking of the tarot cards <laughs> on the cover, what am I wearing today? You are wearing the Lover's Tarot Card shirt. By Lauren L. Louise. Oh my, oh my gosh. And you can get one too for Pride Month, supporting yes. queer creators. You can find the link for the shop underneath this video. They come in pink, they come in white. You can get a jumper. jumper. It's got the tarot card on the oh, back. Yeah. Sorry, yes. I show you oh my gosh. Okay. Can you see it? Yep, just sit up. Yep. Wait. Yep. There we go. <laughs> so you got the tarot card on the back. If you like it and if you like Lauren, which I like Lauren lots, then you should buy one. <laughs> <laughs> so book number five is actually not a single book. It is a series of books. Hey, I told you that you could only have ten books. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, video. but I can't separate these. This is The Strange Worlds Travel Agency by L.D. Lipinski. There are three books in the series that got finished this year. This front one has an interesting cover because I got a proof copy, so this is before the final copies got released, but this is what the other covers look like. Very pretty. The whole series is about Flick Hudson, who discovers and joins the secret Strange Worlds Travel Agency, which is a magical travel agency where you can travel to different worlds through suitcases. She becomes really good friends with the guardian of the travel agency, whose name is Jonathan. He's a trans man, but it's really subtle written into the book he just is it's not a big deal it's really great and by the time you get to book three Flick has a very cute very sweet budding teen romance with another character called Avery this one's a really good book for younger people to read if you're like just thinking about maybe I might not be straight maybe I might be different from other people and you want to read something that makes you feel different is good and different is great then this is a good series for you it's also really safe to ask your parents or guardians or anyone to buy for you there's nothing on the cover or on the back that indicates so there's anything queer in the books so definitely recommend you can you can ask for anyone to get it for you they're not going to suspect anything if you need to stay safe i'd recommend to read if you like the nevermore series if you ever read the magic faraway tree by Ina blatton i might be showing my age with that book recommendation I think so. <laughs> yeah anything with its magical fantasy adventure traveling to different worlds they're really beautifully written books would highly recommend can't say highly recommend for every single book in this list. well i highly recommend everything on this list okay so <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Everything is a high recommendation. That's why they made the list. <laughs> By the way, there is at least one, there might be more, I can't remember, at least one character in the book who also uses they, them pronouns, so they're non-binary. And that, again, is just a normal incidental thing in the book. It's not talked about. It's not like, oh my gosh, it's just there, which I think is really great, especially for younger readers. The sixth book on this list is Tell It to the Bees by Fiona Shaw. The film version of this was actually one of the first lesbian films I ever saw in a cinema full of other lesbians, and it was an amazing experience. So this book, if you're a fan of Carol, this is like an alternative to Carol. Same sort of thing, historical lesbian drama romance. In the book, Lydia has a young son called Charlie and a disintegrating marriage. Her son Charlie becomes friends with the town doctor whose name is Jean. Uh, Jean has a collection of bees that Charlie gets really involved in helping to look after and care for. And he tells all his secrets to the bees. But when Lydia, his mom and Charlie get kicked out of their house, they move in with Jean. Lydia and Jean start to become really close friends and they set the whole town talking about their growing friendship. It actually has a happy ending, which is a really good thing for books that are written a little bit more dated, like Carol does as well, so I really appreciate that. Beautiful story, you get the child's perspective as well as the adult's perspective. This one's probably only safe if you're out of the closet, just because you can see from the cover that it's pretty queer, and that does make references to like the growing relationship on the back of the book as well. Would recommend for adult readers, just because it's written for an adult audience, there's some mature language in there. There'd be references to intimacy between the two women. Nothing Nothing very explicit, but yeah. Wait, you've read three of the books in this list. I have. <laughs> Book number seven Yay. is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Yay, this With... is like my fave. Mm -hmm. Because Lauren's a reader of nonfiction, this is a nonfiction book. It's a biography by Glennon Doyle. It's Glennon telling everyone about her life. She was married to a man for a very long time, had kids, and that marriage was sort of disintegrating for other reasons. And then she meets a woman called Abby and they fall in love. And this is about how that happened, the blended families as a, as a result, and also just generally like being a woman. That's what yeah. I really like about it. It's, it's not... very empowering. Mm. Like it makes you want to do better or be better or be more confident. Yeah, claiming your power as a woman. There's this really great reference in the beginning about a cheater. I won't spoil it for you, but yeah, you are a Also, we cheater. can do hard things. We can do hard things. There's a podcast that Glenna Doyle runs called We Can Do Hard Things, which is huh. a quote from this book. Yeah, you should check it out. So again, this one's probably best for adult readers just because Glenna's talking about 
my adult life, adult life things, not necessarily yeah. I aimed don't at children. Think yeah, if you were younger, I don't think it would be. It wouldn't be as impactful for yeah, you. Yeah, just because you, you haven't lived grown. as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So save it, keep it on your read to read list for you know a couple years down the track. But also, Leo, if you're watching this, read this one. Yeah, would recommend for readers who aren't queer. If you're a woman and you're just existing in this modern world, please read this book. It'll give you lots of all the good happy feelings. Yeah, I think for older readers too, like anyone who's like I don't know, 18 plus, not because it's graphic or anything, but I think it is generally safe to have like if it's on your bedside table and mm -hmm. your housemate sees it they're not going to assume that you're gay just no you yeah this book. you can see the cover's pretty like it's pretty but it's not it's apparently not, gay. gay yeah there is a slight reference on the back about like there she is like spotting the woman for the first time if you like Brené Brown yeah Elizabeth Gilbert any of those if you read any of that sort of stuff this is right in that it, vein exactly yeah in fact did you know that Glennon Doyle and Brené Brown and Elizabeth Gilbert are all friends <laughs> that makes so much sense yeah <laughs> I have other books on that shelf mm -hmm. both those authors are on that shelf and glennon sits right beside them mm -hmm. and these least tabs the different colors oh yeah the... i gave this book to you to read because mm -hmm. i absolutely loved it and i like tagged the shit out of it and, and then, then i tagged, tagged the shit out of it so if anyone wants to borrow our copy and also add tags let yes. us know pick a color goodbye goodbye Book number eight on the list is Gentleman Jack by Angela Steidel. This one is a biography, not an autobiography. So Angela Steidel's writing about a real person, Gentleman Jack, whose real name was Anne Lister, who was considered like one of the first modern lesbians. She was around in the 19th century and had what is considered like the first modern same-sex marriage in a church with her wife, whose name was also Anne. Very original with the naming in English, oh in England in Rose 19th and century. Rosie? Yes, Anne and Anne, spelt slightly different, one with an E, one Without. There's also an Australian YouTuber couple, Beck and Beck. See? Historically proven. Anne and Anne, Beck and Beck, Rose and Rosie. One of us needs to change our names. Lauren and, Lauren and Laura? <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Laura. The reason we know so much about Anne Lister's life is she kept extensive coded diaries for her entire life down to like the minute of the day, including a lot of details about her various intimate encounters with a range of different women. So recommend this one if you're an adult, just because there are obviously a lot of inclusions of all that diary entry stuff. And if you like biographies, if you like a little bit of historical knowledge, this one's great as well. There's also a TV series called Gentleman Jack. Lauren and I reacted to one of the kissing scenes from it in a previous video. It's very cute and season two is out now. So you can check that one out if you prefer to watch than read. Drum roll, second last is... This thick gal. <laughs> This book is called The Priory of the Orange Tree and it's by Samantha Shannon. It is probably my favorite standalone fantasy novel ever, which is a very big thing for me to say because I read so many books, but this book is excellent. I can't describe it very well in a short space of time because as you can see, it is enormous and a lot happens. It follows four main protagonists across multiple different countries and continents in the fictional world. They're all sort of coming together to fight this growing ancient evil that's coming back after a thousand years. One of the storylines involves a relationship that develops between Queen Sabran of Innocence and her newest lady-in-waiting, whose name is Ede, who is also a secret magic assassin. I can't tell you too much more than that. It's a brilliant book. It's brilliantly written. If you like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, but you always wanted them to have more women, this is that book. It is also, amazingly, safe to read if you're not yet out of the closet because there's nothing on the cover and nothing on the back that would very easily indicate that it's queer. It's kind of very subtly done throughout the book. It's beautiful. Please buy this book. Please read it. Please, please, please. <laughs> would only recommend to read if you're an adult just because there are some intimate scenes in the book. There are also some graphic violence scenes. It is a fantasy setting. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking of purchasing this one. The last book out of 10 is not a book. It is a series. Oh my God. <laughs> it is the Nevernight Chronicles by J. Crystal. Off, who is incidentally the only male author in this entire list I've just realized. <laughs> He's an Australian writer, He's very prolific so if you've read any other books by Jay Kristoff you'd like these ones. Nevernight is in as small a words as I can do set in like a ancient Roman-esque republic and it follows Mia Corvair who is training to become an assassin at this very fancy assassin church school also with an ulterior motive to get vengeance on the man who destroyed her entire family when she was a child. So lots of stats 
stabby times, lots of sexy times. Mia swears a lot. It's a brilliant story, but definitely only recommend to read if you're 18 plus, even older plus, just because it is very graphic. There's a lot of intimacy involved. Jay Kristoff is Australian, so as you can imagine, the swearing is prolific, <laughs> but it's an excellent fun read with lots of engaging characters. In the second and third book of the series, Mia develops a relationship with another girl called Ash, who used to be an enemy of hers. I can't tell you why, because it'll be too much spoiler. It was also a surprise gay book for me. I started reading this series having no idea that it was queer. It means it's safe for you to buy when you're not out of the closet because nothing on the cover, nothing on the back that would indicate it's gay. And as I say, I got to book two and three and went, oh my gosh, she's gay, yay! Surprise gay, I love a surprise gay book. If you like Brandon Sanderson, if you like Priory of the Orange Tree, any epic fantasy series, or if you're a fan of ancient Rome, Definitely recommend. I definitely recommend everything, guys. <laughs> Nevernight is probably my favorite fantasy series ever, which again is a very big thing for me to say. I read a lot of fantasy books and a lot of fantasy series, but this is excellent. Jay Kristoff is an amazing writer, but he will break you into a thousand pieces. Jay Kristoff, you bastard. And that's it. That's the last, that's the last book, which wasn't a book, I'm sorry. It ended up being more than 10 books, but it was, it was 10 books, right? Am I in trouble? I'll let it pass. Good. <laughs> if you like this video, give it a massive thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you do not miss any more games. And let years. me know in the comments if you liked it and if you want me to recommend any more books. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got anything for me to read. Always love some queer book recommendations. Please and thanks. If you guys do not like reading and you want to do some watching instead, mm -hmm. we did a video where we rated lesbian kisses. Yeah, so you can go check that out and see all those shows. It be will on, be on Girl Pals face. It'll be on my face. But go and check out all those shows because they're hella queer and we that you know if the kisses are worth watching yeah. or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye.